Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out The Scientist by Coldplay in fourths tuning. Now it's actually 12 years ago that I first did a lesson on this, but it's still a super popular song. And we're not checking out the super easy beginner version. There is a version of that over on the website. There'll be a link in the description if you happen to be over on YouTube. While you're there, you might want to click that subscribe button and maybe hit the bell icon to be notified when I'm doing a live stream or when I've got new lessons coming out. But anyway, Today we're going to be looking at a version using fourths tuning, which basically means the thinnest two strings have been tuned up one semitone. Now I'm just going to knock it back to regular tuning, just so. Just so you can see how simple it is. You know, you're at a party and somebody hands you a guitar and you grab it, you play a tune, and you think, well, I might get a bit sneaky here and do a, a cool tuning. Now, this tune is called tuning in fourth. The simplest way to think of it is the thinnest two strings are tuned up a semitone. So if you want to use a tuner, you could just tune your B string up to a C and the thin E string up to an F. If you're familiar with the fifths tuning idea, the fifth fret tuning technique, where you use the fifth fret on one string to tune the open of the next string, You'd know you do that all the way until you're tuning the second string where you move back to the fourth fret to tune the B string. Well, in this case, you would move your finger up to the fifth fret to the note C and tune that note up to a C. I often find that I need to go a little bit sharper than the regular C. I'm not sure why. If I'm using the tune, I've got a tuner here to reference as well. Uh, to tune the thinner string, you go back to the fifth fret again. Now, what happens if you play a regular chord like a C chord? Really, really doesn't sound nice at all, or a G. It's, it's not great. But when you play the right chords with this tuning, it sounds really lush. Now, there's only a few chords in this song and they all work fantastic. They're kind of like playing power chords or bar chords, but without the bar, okay? So they're not particularly difficult to do. They're maybe not a super beginner thing, but like maybe a, a, somebody who's finished a beginner course or whatever, or an intermediate guitar player should definitely be checking this out. It's a re really nice tune. A nice idea conceptually as well. It can be a fun one to explore if you're a songwriter as well, This the concept. So let's go through the chords, and I'll talk a bit about more about the rhythm. This first chord is really, really amazing. It's like a D minor 70 kind of sound. The tip of the first finger is muting the thicker string, then the finger, first finger is on the fifth fret of the fifth string, third finger goes down the seventh fret of the fourth string, little finger, seventh fret of the third string, and then the thinnest two strings are left open. Lovely sound. The next chord that we've got is kind of a B flat sus2 or b flat add 9 i suppose you should call it correctly and it's just like a b flat bar chord using an e shape but we've lifted the bar up so the thinnest two strings are open again so first finger's on the sixth fret of the thickest string third finger eighth fret on the fifth string little finger on the eighth fret of the uh, fourth string and second finger seventh fret of the third string thinnest two strings remain open again and then we move that down to the fifth, uh, first fret and this is an F chord, uh, just a straight up F actually, at this point. When you play it like this, it's almost like, because of the tuning, it's like we've got the bar down, those two strings were tuned up, so we move it back and that's where we get the open strings. But there's a really lovely little variation that really makes it sound kind of piano-like, which is lifting the second finger off to get that open G string, makes it an F add nine sound. Really, really, really tasty. Of course, this is a piano song originally, so this is an arrangement. I'm pretty sure I can hear this guitar on the original recording, strumming the acoustic part though. It's got such a big, warm sound when you get into this tuning to play it. So the basic idea for the verses, chord progression one, is gonna be this D minor, to the B flat, two, three, four, to F, two, three, four, to F add nine, two, Four and again. D minor. B flat. To F. F add nine. And it goes through that four times for the verse. Each verse is that same sequence round four times. 
definitely want to learn it with just real simple strumming first, just four down strums to the bar. Last time for the verse. Into the chorus, we go back to the B flat for two bars. Two, three, four. Said it was easy. F. to this cool C over G bass. Then we've got this other chord. Looks like I guess a C major seven over G would be the, the name in a regular tuning. In this particular case, it's an add four C, add four, I guess. It's just an interesting chord. Uh, third finger, third fret of the thicker string, little finger, third fret of the fifth string, second finger, second fret of the fourth string, thinnest three strings open. Really, really nice. So it just replace it for one bar. Two, three, four, one. And then it just hangs for a whole bar. Then we've got this other little, the only other section in the song, which is, I'm going to call it a bridge. It's a little four bar section where it's going F. Now it goes to B flat. On the record, I think it goes to this one. It looks like a B flat power chord. So first finger is back to muting the thicker string. First finger, first fret, fifth string. Third finger, third fret, fourth string, little finger, third fret, third string. Thinnest two strings open. Now you could of course play this one. But you can hear it's text the texture is different. In this one you get this, this clash here. Sounds richer and in the bridge I think it actually sounds nicer to go to this version. You don't have to. And that's the bridge. So there's just those three sections. One for the verses, which is going to be this D minor, B flat, F, F add nine times four for the verse. Then we've got the chorus, which will be B flat, B flat, F, F add nine times two, and then followed by the C with a G bass for two bars, the second bar being the hold. And then that little bridgey bit, which is just four bars, which goes F, B flat, possibly the, the, you know, the different way of playing the B flat if you want, and then back to F, F add nine. And that's your three sections that make up the whole song. It just goes back to another verse, then a chorus, then the bridge. Then it does the verse chord progression round four times with a kind of instrumental bit with the oohs and ahs on it, and then one time half a verse uh, progression just acoustically there just to end the song. Uh, I think my dog is getting really into this tune. She's a uh, nuzzling on the blanket down there, aren't you Ziggy? Sorry if you can hear some weird sounds going on in the, in the background, that's my my dog. She's in season at the moment and acting a little bit weird. Anyway, uh, let's talk now a little bit more about the rhythm. So this song, even though it's a bit of, it's slow, it's still kind of moving and one of the, the kind of step ups that you want to be thinking about here is doing it's 16th note strumming, which means that there are eight down strums in the bar. So just if we look at that first chord, even though we're going like one, two, three, four, we don't want our hand to be moving that slowly because it makes it feel dirgy if it's just going like this. It feels kind of labored and slow, but moving the hand twice as quick seems to change it. Even though it's exactly the same and it shouldn't be any different, there's something about the way, the feeling that it gives you moving your hand like that, that, that gives it a little bit more motion, a little bit more movement, which I think is important with this kind of tune. Now what I'd recommend is you actually play a bigger strum on beat one and then a very little strum on the end. So you get one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, one, So the, on the beat is a big strum through all the strings and then the other one is just on the bass notes of the chord.
Now, if you want to get really fancy on it, there's all sorts of different dynamic levels of the strums, and that's what kind of makes these tunes work, especially if you're playing on your own. So that once we've got used to doing this kind of big, small, big, small, big, small, big, small, big, small. We've got the movement now. That sounds cool. The next level up is to put a further accent on beats two and four. So that, as soon as you put an accent on the two and the four, it again drives it a little bit more. It's accenting the backbeat, it's called, where the snare drum will be played by the drummer. So they're kind of different options, but they morph together a little bit. So even though this feels a little bit like I'm doing one and two and three and four, and then all of the beats are the same except for the two and the four. That's not right either, is it? One and two and three and four and there's this other blend of those two things. So the one is about a seven, the and would be about a three, the two would be about a nine, say, and then the and after two would be back to being a three, and it's that pattern repeated. So you end up with this kind of, the heaviest accents on two and four. On one and three, you have an accent, but it's just a medium one, and all of the ands are about the same. Now, that's, really complicated and to try and think about it that much and in that de much detail and trying to play it that way by thinking about it it's pretty difficult i'm not really sure anyone does it that way i certainly don't i only understand it through analyzing what's what i've been doing you want to feel it but i think having some understanding of what's going on and what you're trying to do will help you get to that point quicker you want to start with just doing the one and two and three and four and getting used to that first of all then worry about one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and then see if you can blend those two things together and have that Now I'm already, I'm doing other stuff as well People are going, to go, what, what are you doing there man? There's more stuff going on than what I'm showing you now. There's always variations when you're doing a strumming pattern like this. It's, again, it's a replication of a piano part. I'm not teaching you exactly what's on the record. It's slightly different here. Now, you definitely want to be doing little variations at the end of sections, like the end of a verse going into the chorus. You might add in a few extra strums, build the dynamic a bit to go like, the audience can feel that you're going into the chorus. That stuff makes a big difference as well. Learning to develop a change between the different sections so it might die down a little bit when you go into the second verse, for example. You might want to just quieten it all down a little bit. These sort of things, you, you can't really learn it. You experience it through try, playing along with the, the original recordings and trying to copy the feeling of the track, when it gets big and when it gets small and figuring out where those changes go. Now. The fact that your hand is moving consistently all the time means you can add in upstrokes when you want as well. So I regularly, in this tune, will be going. Now, actually, that's already, that felt too much. I'm like, eh, no, that's, I don't want to add in that many upstrokes because then it gets all, like it's too busy, there's too much going on. But if your hand is moving consistently, it's okay. It wouldn't sound wrong. For me, I was just like, felt too much, but it didn't, it wasn't like out of time or it wasn't wrong. I could definitely try it and do it. And, you know, you should experiment yourself. And again, it's a nice way of developing, a, you know, between the different sections so that the verse and the chorus sound a little different. To the listener, it doesn't want to be the same all of the way through. If it's the same right the way through the whole tune, frankly, it just gets a little bit boring to listen to, especially if there's no vocal. So, um, yeah, spend a little bit of time on the rhythm and playing along with the original recording, trying to cop the feel of that as well. You know, I think that playing along with the original recordings is the best way of copying what we call the time feel, because it shouldn't be like robotic and really strict. It wants to be nice and loose where you're feeling this kind of... Dun, dun, cha, dun. It wants to feel nice when you're doing it. It's not just about it being right. 
not about it being robotic. It's got to feel good when you're playing it and it's got to feel good to the listener. And that kind of thing takes practice and being aware of making it feel good. It's not. All stiff and tense. It's relaxed and comfortable and it's got to feel nice when you do it, you know. So after you've gone through the kind of the technical stuff, you want to try and forget about all of that as much as you can and just work on making it feel nice because if it feels nice to you it'll feel nice to the people who are listening to you i really hope you enjoyed this lesson if you happen to be over on youtube please hit that subscribe button i really appreciate your support and then hit the bell button if you want to be notified when i'm doing some live transcribing or when i've got new lessons out there'll be a link over to the website in the description as well on the website there are loads of lessons on the text part for this very lesson there'll be links to all of the related materials like how to play the chords different tunings all of that sort of stuff and a lot on the 16th note strumming and how to develop your accents and all of those sort of technical things if you need additional help with that and you can ask questions on this lesson and many more if you're over there and you're a registered user and it's still free. So I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. You'll take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.